It never ceases to amaze me the crazy crap that you can buy off of eBay. My uh, most recent find is this uh, Israeli military rangefinder that I bought. Now uh, this thing is old school. It uh, uses a flashlight pumped NDEAG laser and I'm hoping to build a little pulse laser pistol out of it. So I hope you enjoy this video. This is the power supply that the seller shipped with my laser head. And I guess that writing on the front says uh, danger high voltage in Hebrew. Now I'm not quite sure what's inside this thing. It's probably a little pulse forming network that's uh, used to power that flash lamp. But I'll crack it open and see what's actually inside. I guess I got a little too zealous with that hacksaw there because I ended up cutting through some of those electrical components as well as my finger. So uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be using this component. But uh, luckily, powering flash lamps is not that difficult. And in fact, I have uh, some old cameras here so I can use components out of those to power the uh, laser flash lamp in there. The flash circuit inside of cameras is actually pretty interesting. So it starts by taking 3 volts DC and stepping up to about 330 volts to uh, power that capacitor there. But the interesting thing is, is that that uh, flash lamp is constantly hooked up to that capacitor. There's no physical switch there. So they get around that by uh, making the circuits apply a short but high voltage pulse that causes the uh, xenon gas to ionize inside the lamp, which makes it conductive. And then all the charge from the capacitor can flow through the lamp, giving you that flash. So watch, let me, uh, let me hit the trigger here quickly. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, I made a dumb mistake and accidentally nuked this uh, little trigger circuit that came with a laser. But luckily, I just uh, hooked up those uh, trigger wires to the uh, trigger of the uh, flash circuit there. So without further ado, let's fire this thing up. Let me put on my goggles quickly so I don't annihilate my retinas. And here we go. So you can see that little bit of smoke there. So the effect is pretty weak. Uh, I'll probably add another capacitor in parallel to see if I can up the output. I can't say I'm that impressed with this power output. Even at 20 joules input to the flash lamp, I'm just not getting that big of a pulse. I tried ionizing air with this thing and it's not doing it. So I'm guessing that that die Q switch in there is eating up a lot of my laser output power. So I'm going to try tearing down the cavity and seeing if I can remove it. So I tore down the uh, laser head to access some of the optics inside. So this holds the uh, high reflecting mirror and then this one holds the output coupler and this is where the laser light escapes. But if you flip it over, you see this uh, black optic on the inside, which I'm fairly certain is that uh, passive die Q switch. So right now it's black, but if you hit it with a lot of light in a short amount of time, it actually becomes transparent. And uh, that's actually how it works inside the laser cavity. So uh, this, this optic won't let any light through it until there's enough energy built up in the cavity, and then it becomes transparent, allowing all the energy in the crystal to be released at once. And that's how you get those short but very intense pulses of light. It's funny that by removing the Q-switch, I actually reduced the peak output power by several thousand times. But that being said, I increased the output energy considerably by uh, several times, and that's why it uh, makes such more of an impact on our targets when we shoot it with a laser. Let me fire it up here in the dark. I took all those parts and crudely threw them on this old BB gun here. And I even added a couple extra capacitors to increase the output energy. And while it definitely works, I still think that it's missing something. That's better. So now I have a fully functional pulse laser taser. Now this thing is very impractical, simply because it's so dangerous. I mean, there's enough energy stored in that uh, laser power supply to easily stop my heart. Plus those pulses of light are peaking in the several thousands of watts, which could just annihilate my retinas. But without further ado, let's destroy some stuff. Let's charge up those capacitors. Let's pop a hole through a CD. The laser is definitely able to blow some holes to that CD. And those uh, pops you are hearing were from the uh, CD material absorbing that laser light and violently vaporizing out causing little explosions. Now let's hit that CD with some high voltage. Huh, the damage is slightly more apparent than the laser. A balloon. Electrical tape. Gotta love those little ablation craters you get when the laser pulse hits the tape. Let's see if this thing can remove rust off these wire cutters.
it blasted the rust right off of this uh, wire cutter here. That's pretty awesome. Yep, lasers are better at removing rust. A fluorescent light bulb. This thing also functions as a lighter. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, I wasn't planning on adding the taser until later, but I think it added a good touch. Now, uh, as for some of my other projects, my uh, laser bazooka is coming along. I've ran into more problems, but you should see a video of that pretty soon, as well as some of my explosively pumped ruby lasers. But yeah, until the next time, stay safe and happy tasing.